Do you know, lately I've been noticing that a lot of the flashlights coming out on the market are adding features to it beyond just being a flashlight that sometimes have questionable value. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Some of them may be of value to you and maybe not so much to me. So when the new company, or at least new to me, you are Flamp, I'll spell it out because I'm not quite sure that's the way it's supposed to be pronounced, offered to send me their latest flashlight now in Kickstarter known as the V63. I looked at the features and thought, yeah, that is kind of interesting. And if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. So just before we take a closer look at the V63 from UR Flamp or URF Lamp, again, I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. I wanted to share with you what they sent along with it. So the flashlight arrived in this case, nice hard-sided case. And I thought, well, you know, that's a little bit more than I think uh, I'd like to see my flashlights arrive in because how often am I actually going to use this after I put the flashlight into service? until I opened it up and saw what all they had included. And it's actually a great way of organizing everything. So there's quite a bit in here. And uh, some of what you're going to about to see will lead into some of the key features, but I'll explain those as I go along as well. So inside of the case itself are a couple of things. It does come with two batteries. This is the 18650, a 5000 milliamp hour 18650, but it also comes with an 1100 milliamp hour 18350, which is installed in the flashlight right now. I'll show you that in a few minutes time. What's that all about? Why two batteries? Well, part of the reason is, is because this flashlight, one of those unique features that I mentioned when that caused me to want to have a look at it, a closer look at it, is the fact that without changing the tube or, it, you know, coming with an additional tube, you can extend the tube built into the flashlight to stretch it out to accept the larger battery. So I'll, I'll, again, I'll explain more about that and demonstrate it in a few moments time. It does of course come with the obligatory USB type C charging cable, a lanyard, a pair of spare O-rings, and this little feature, which is kind of cool. And this is a USB type C, or type C to a USB type A adapter. So you can use the flashlight as a battery bank. Now that in itself is not unique. There's quite a few flashlights that do that. They don't always include the adapter though. So it's kind of nice to have it. And of course there is the manual for all the information regarding the light and the warranty information. Oh, one more feature. And this again is another one of those unique things. This is a additional piece that screws on to the bottom of the flashlight that is a magnet, not just a magnet, but a magnet with a ball bear or ball screw, if you will, that allows it to operate and set up at different angles. Again, I'll demonstrate that. So let's put all that aside, bring the flashlight back into focus here. And what I want to do is just go through a few of the key features before we get into the specifications. So key features, as I mentioned, it has an innovative retractable battery tube, which does allow it to use both the 18650 and the 18350 lithium ion batteries. It does have that articulated, or what I call the detachable articulated magnetic base. I don't know what the company calls it. It's just the way I describe it. But what is also cool about that is where that base mounts onto the bottom of the flashlight, it is a quarter inch 20 thread mount. So this can be attached to any tripod, that anything that you can attach a camera to, you can attach the flashlight to as well. Benefit to that? Oh yeah, I really think so. And again, I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. The flashlight can be used as a power bank with that adapter I shared with you. And there are two versions of this flashlight. I was offered either version, and this is the version I chose. First off, there is a V63S, an S standing for spotlight. It has a single LED built into it to give it a more 
uh, dense, if you will, focused light for a longer distance. And there's the V63F for floodlight, and that's the version I have. And you can see it has three LEDs inside of its reflector. And uh, those are the Osram P9 uh, LEDs rated at 6,500 Kelvin, so quite a nice bright white light. And we'll again <laughs> talk more about that in a few minutes time. Final feature I want to talk about is its warranty. It does have a five year warranty, but that only exists if you register the flashlight with them after you purchase it. Otherwise, it's a one year warranty. Now, uh, you know, why would you not register for a five year warranty? Yes, you'll have to look at all the emails they send you for future advertisements, but to extend the warranty to five years, I think it's worth having to do that one small thing. All right, let's get into the physical specifications for this light. Now, all the information I'm giving you now will be repeated in the video description if you just want to fast forward a few moments to uh, the next section. But what, let's just start. Length, the overall length. Now, I have the short battery, the 18350 install. I'll give you the lengths and all the specs for both versions, versions meaning when you extend the battery or extend the battery too. But right now it is 3.3 inches long, which is 115 millimeters. It has a diameter of 1.6 inches, which is 40 millimeters. And it has a weight of 4.4 ounces or 124 grams. That's with the battery installed. As I mentioned, it comes with three of the Osram P9 uh, LEDs in it. It is IP68 waterproof and it has an impact resistance of 1.5 meters. So nothing too out of the ordinary there, right? It's pretty much the standard things you expect from any quality flashlight today. All right, let's go over the performance specifications for this light. Now, I want to mention now that these are the specifications for the V63F or floodlight. There's a different set of specifications for the v 63 S, which is the spotlight version. And also I want to mention that there, because of the two batteries, the 18650 and the 18350, there are some variations, of course. And again, I'll put all this information in the video description below. So let's start with the 18350 battery. I'm just going to run through these numbers quickly. It turbo, you get 2,800 lumens lasting for 90 seconds, and then it will drop down to 600 lumens lasting 1.1 hours. High, 2,000 lumens for 150 seconds, drop into 550 lumens for 1.3 hours. Medium is 500 lumens lasting 1.5 hours. Low is 100 lumens lasting 9 hours, and Eco is 15 lumens lasting 50 hours. Now let's go up to the larger 18650 battery. Turbo is a whopping 3,800 lumens. That's actually quite high for a light of this size. Uh, it only lasts 60 seconds, but then it drops to 600 lumens, which will last for 3.3 hours. High is 2,000 lumens, uh, at, which will last for 150 seconds, then drop to 550 lumens for 3.6 hours. So that is the same as with the smaller battery. Medium is 500 lumens, lasting for 0.2 hours. Low is 100 lumens, lasting 31 hours. And Eco is again 15 lumens, lasting 172 hours. All right, just before we go into the operation of the light, just want to take a moment to talk about the on-off switch because, of course, I've been finding more and more lights that I test that I'm becoming a bit fussier and more particular about where the on-off switch is placed. If it's not a button on the end, like a tactical type button might be a tactical flashlight might have. It's mounted somewhere on the side. And if it's not well designed, then it can be a challenge to find an index in the dark without looking at the light. So how does the V63 rate? Actually, quite well. As you can see, the on-off button is mounted inside a raised portion of the battery tube right here. Now, the only thing is, uh, so is the USB Type-C charging port. Now, that's not that much of a problem at all because what I found in the last five weeks of testing is if I'm to grab this in the dark to turn it on, I really don't have to decide which one of those two projected bumps has the on-off switch. I just squeeze them both. And one of them, either my finger or my thumb, whichever landed on it, is going to turn the light on. So now let's get into the operation of it. So to turn it on, it's just on and off 
with simple uh, on off click of the light. If I want to go directly to eco, which of course is what I prefer to do if it's dark in the tent or whatever room I'm in, it's a long press. Long press being about half a second in length and you can again turn it on. If it does have memory, so if I turn it on now, it's going to come on in whatever the last lumen setting, I think in this case it might be uh, medium or high, can't quite tell, we'll run it through, then it'll come back on to that last lumen setting. To run through the lumen settings, low, medium and high, you just press and hold the button, it'll run through low, medium, high, low, medium, high, and I'll turn it off there. To access turbo, it's a double press. And you can see it's considerably brighter. Now you really can't appreciate it because of course the camera is compensated for the additional life by darkening everything out. And if I want to access the strobe or the, or the SOS while the light is turned on, I would triple tap and I would get both first strobe, triple tap again, and then I would get into SOS. Let me just turn that light off so that the camera compensates back. All right, the last thing that I want to talk about is the electronic lockout. Always a great feature to have on a flashlight. You know, I don't know that it's necessary on this flashlight because, um, yes, you can carry this in the pocket. It does not come with a pocket clip, so you could carry it loose in your pocket or with your landry in your pocket. I don't see this being at high risk for being turned on accidentally. Still, it's nice to have an electric lockout. So how do you access the lockout? You're going to press the on-off switch, but rather than just 0.5 seconds, the the eco light will come on, but continue to press it for a full two seconds and the light will lock itself out. So it's very simple. You just press and hold until the light turns off and doesn't come back on. To unlock it, you triple press this switch and it will come back on again. So simple overall operation, really quite simple. And I, I like it just intuitive the way it is. All right, now it's time to take a look at those value added features that you are flamp again, I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, have put into this light. The first off, and probably one of the most unique for this light, is the extendable battery tube that allows you to switch between the 18350, which I have installed, and the 18650. So let me show you how that works. First off, we'll take the battery tube right off, pop out the 18350 battery. Now, on the rest of this light, you just simply turn, grab the base and turn the battery tube extends out and when it stops you're now ready to install the 18650 so let me put that in put it back on the flashlight start the threads going turn it up really nice and tight and we're good to go so now we have it installed with the 18350 now aesthetically personally i don't think it's as nice looking as it is in its shorter form but it does give you the longer run times that you may or may not want. So it's, it's, it's nice to have the option of running both batteries. I think you've already probably realized I like it with the short battery. That's what I traveled with. That's what I camped with. It has enough run time, especially if I'm not running at a turbo or high all the time. I don't find I need those high lumen settings most of the time. I'm fine with eco, low, and medium most of the time. So I like using the smaller battery in it, but it's nice to know that I can run the larger battery. Of course, 18650s are a little bit more common than the 18350s. So if you're looking for, if you bought it and uh, had extra 18650s, good to know that you can use it. Now, here's something that you just automatically assume. You can tail stand that. So if you want, you can put, the put it on the table and have it uh, shine light up to the ceiling or wherever uh, and it works quite well. By the way, if I haven't already shown that, there is where the lanyard would install on the back of the light. Now, while I've got it here, I just want to show you that's the quarter inch 20 thread attachment for the magnetic end. So let's just throw that on now so you can see that. Here it is again and I just have to get it started and there we go. That's about three turns and it's fully on. Now, it's not flush to the flashlight, but there's a reason for that. And that's because you can articulate it, meaning you can bend it and have it at an angle. Now, it's not a lot of angle, but you can see there is quite a bit of variation on that. So what's the advantage of doing that? Well, if you have, uh, you're going to use this as a work light and you want to mount it to something metallic that uh, will hold it in place so that you're hands free from the light, you may or may not have a 
the beam directed exactly where you want it. So now you can angle it down, angle it up, sideways, whichever way you want it. So I think that's quite a unique feature. It's not something I'll leave on the light, but it's nice to know that it's there. Again, that's why that case is nice to have, that you can put this on if you decide you want to use it with a work light. Now, I just want to show you this with the battery. I have a stainless steel ruler here, and I just want to show you... Um, let me just back the camera out a little bit so I can give this a better demonstration. You can see it's holding the light very, very well. But just look at this. Look how far I can almost bend the ruler back on itself before it finally flips off. That is a strong battery, for sure. I, I think this is going to meet everyone's needs for a battery on the base of a light. Now, let me just take this off for a second. All right, so I've taken the netted base off. This is one of my Gorilla Pods. That will screw on, get it lined up properly. So what's the advantage of this? Well, this is kind of cool. Let me just tighten that up. This is kind of cool in that I can now set this up. I may even have to back the camera out a little bit further. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get it out far enough. All right, but I think you get the message or the idea of what I'm, I've done here. I've mounted the flashlight on this little camera tripod, and now I can aim it wherever I want it as a work light, or I can use it as an auxiliary recording light for when I'm videoing in the dark. It doesn't have to be on a flat surface with a gorilla pod type thing, this type of tripod. I can wrap it around a tree or a branch and again, aim it wherever I want it to go. So there is a lot of versatility in this. They took some very simple concepts. Let me just take this off of the tripod, put the tripod aside. Uh, yeah, so that is a neat feature. Not only does it allow you to use the battery mount, or the articulated battery uh, piece. It also allows you to, to attach it to any tripod as well. All right, I think what I've done is I've shown you all the features. What you really would like to see now, I'm sure, is this in operation in the dark. So let's do that. All right, we're doing some nighttime testing of the UR Flamp V63F standing for flood. Now, I'm not even going to bother with the eco mode because it's just not going to show up out here in the backyard, but I will turn it on eco just to, yeah, I can see on the camera it's not showing up at all, but let's just hold it. I think we're starting to see a little bit of light on low. Medium is definitely showing up here in the backyard. High. Let's see if I can get it to turbo. There we go. Turbo. All right. I'm just going to take it back down to high again for a second. There we go. High. Uh, just to point out that this is definitely a floodlight. I've got, it feels like 180 degrees of light. It's not that much, of course, but it is just lighting up the whole backyard here up to the neighbor's house and the other, the other neighbor past that even. And uh, what I'm seeing is a central hotspot with quite a distinct demarcation line in the flood on the outside, so the spell outside of the hotspot. But overall, this is really a floodlight in my hand, and it's doing a really good job here on high. I don't even have to go up to turbo. I probably wouldn't use turbo very often uh, anyway. All right, good demonstration of the V63 from UR Flamp. All right, let's wrap this video up. The few closing comments on the UR Flamp V63-F standing for floodlight. So what are my thoughts? Um, I really like this little light. Now you can see, and I've said it already, I prefer to use it in the shorter form factor with the 18350 battery installed. There's nothing wrong with the longer battery uh, or the longer form factor, but it, it's this size that I find it fi most convenient. Um, it's not a pocket light. Well, it could be, I guess. It depends on if you're putting it in a coat pocket. So I wouldn't carry this EDC with me in my pants pocket all day long. But it was really just the right size for camping for two weeks, traveling for another two weeks, having at the nightstand next to me, putting in places where in my kit bags, shoulder bags, that type of thing. Uh, yeah, I actually find it just about the perfect size. Now, what about all those extra features, all those value-added features? Do I see value in them? Well, when it comes to the fact that you can use this as a power bank, it's a nice feature to have. I don't know that I would ever need it, but it's nice to have it if I did need it. Truth is, I carry power banks with me when I travel and I go camping. So the likelihood of having to use my flashlight to recharge my phone 
probably not going to happen. Again, it is nice to be able to do that. Now, when it comes to being able to extend the tube and put the 18650 battery in, also nice. Again, I'm probably going to leave it in this form factor most of the time that I'm carrying it. When it comes to using the attachable magnetic base, that is a really nice feature to have. Again, I'm not going to leave it on the light, but I can leave it inside of the case, and if there's an application for it, such as working under my sink in the kitchen, or working on my vehicle, or working in uh, some space where I can attach it to a magnetic or to a, a metal surface to, to hold it on, then yeah, I'm going to go attach it because it does work well. And the fact that you can aim the flashlight with it as well is just another added value. The fact that I can use the quarter turn or quarter inch thir uh, 20 thread uh, adapter on the bottom with a, a tripod of some time, again, just adds more value to the snipe. So overall, all those additional features, in my uh, opinion, actually are worthwhile. Okay, so here's the thing. This light right now is an introductory offer, and if you get it before the offer is over, you'll get it, I believe it is half the price. And I'm going to provide the link to where you can take a look at this light. But even after that offer has expired, I think it's worth looking at regardless. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. As I mentioned, I'll put all the information for this light in the video description below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.